President Obama is urging his cabinet secretaries, he brought them together for a quick meeting to find, quote, creative ways for him to use his executive powers. Those remarks coming at a cabinet meeting this morning. It is the second full cabinet meeting of this year. President Obama then headed to the Key Bridge in Washington, where he asked Congress for, for, for far more money for the Highway Trust Fund. If this Congress does not act by the end of the summer, the Highway Trust Fund will run out. Won't be any money there. All told, nearly 700,000 jobs could be at risk next year. That would be like Congress threatening to lay off the entire population of Denver or Seattle or Boston. That's a lot of people. Congress has put forward uh, nearly a dozen proposals to address exactly that issue. But Republicans and Democrats are still fighting about how to pay for it. As President Obama takes the summer to consider executive actions on the immigration crisis that many say he has created, our next guest says the president's uh, call and is now blaming uh, Congress for the border invasion and his gall is simply stunning. Joining us is Manhattan Institute Senior Fellow, City Journal Contributing Editor, Heather McDonald. Uh, Heather, great to have you with us uh, from tonight, you, Southern Luke. California. Uh, this president lacks nothing in the way of gall, chutzpah, uh, uh, just sheer, uh, uh, well, just sheer bravura. Uh, and yet, he is still out there talking as if he's running against Congress and sounding, it seems to me, extraordinarily, his words, extraordinarily hollow. Is anybody taking him seriously? Well, the Democrats are and the immigrant advocates are. This is truly one of the most surreal moments in immigration history, I think, Lou, because we have right now in front of our eyes a very startling preview of what's going to happen if Obama gets his full-scale amnesty. Uh, we have a surge of minors, sometimes accompanied by their parents, sometimes not, coming across the border, expecting, quite rationally, uh, to be allowed to stay, having been drawn here by the magnet of Obama's own unilateral and possibly unconstitutional amnesty for so-called dream uh, juveniles who were brought here by their parents. And so what we're seeing is, is what happens in every single amnesty in the West, whether it's in Europe or here, mm -hmm. you pass an amnesty or, in the case of Obama, l sign it into action without any congressional support, and you bring in more people. And now he's claiming that the solution to this border crisis is yet another amnesty. Uh, so this is completely perverse, and yet yeah. well, on the Democratic he, side of the House... Uh, go excuse ahead. me, go ahead. He's getting away with it. Well, he, he's gotten away with so much. Uh, but it, what I get a kick out of, Heather, is the president talking about he's going it alone. That happens to be his, uh, his uh, modus operandi, no matter what he's doing. He, in fact, is saying to Congress, you have to pass the bill that I approved and constructed, that is the Senate Gang of Eight bill, uh, full-on amnesty and open borders, uh, or I'll go it alone. He's giving them only two ways, and that's his way and his way, and acts as if no one picks up on the lack of distinction between the two. Exactly, and, and yet bashes the Republicans for not being willing to compromise, but he's the one who's not willing to compromise here. And he's already recently been rebuked by the Supreme Court for uh, engaging in unilateral executive action. So this idea that we have this marvelous constitutional law professor up here which is uh, rather stretching I think what his actual yeah. accomplishments were is, well, is preposterous. Well with 13 unanimous decisions against his administration I don't think he will pretend effectively at least uh, much longer that he is uh, uh, a savant on constitutional law and particularly uh, again after losing on so many important cases uh, I mean, it's striking that he would even uh, maintain, attempt to maintain uh, the fiction. Uh, let, let's, with his own appointees voting against him for crying out loud, uh, the White House at this point uh, has made it pretty clear. They understand immigration reform is dead this year. 
uh, they don't understand that the American people are having a fit about what they're witnessing on our southern border. The reality is that both parties, the pres President Bush, uh, uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, uh, pushing for a, a comprehensive immigration reform, famously saying there are jobs that Americans won't do. This president saying that the Republicans are stopping it. The, the reality, it seems to me, Heather, is that the people that this is supposed to be all about, that is, illegal immigrants in this country, are the last people being considered by either party. Because this could have been solved, most recently, by the House Judiciary Committee proposals, four separate bills that would have provided the, the foundation for true reform and true uh, assimilation and accommodation of illegal immigrants. Or it could have been done eight years ago, in 2006 and seven, uh, when both sides started demanding full loaves instead of a compromise. Is there any rationality in prospect at all uh, with the, uh, the fate of uh, these illegal immigrants and the national interest hanging in the balance? Well, I, I don't really see it. I, I see the momentum moving further and further away from any understanding that our country has a unequivocal right to enforce its borders and sovereignty. And, and once you give up on that, mm -hmm. uh, you're left to the irrationality of people outside of our country deciding what our immigration policy Have should be. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a more carefully orchestrated, more powerfully uh, uh, disseminated uh, organization of propaganda than that which we are watching as led by the, uh, this administration, this president, by the Democratic Party, by the uh, activist uh, uh, and advocate groups uh, who say they represent the interest of uh, illegal immigrants. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, I mean, it goes on and on, the national media. Uh, it's extraordinary. Well, what's so extraordinary as we're coming up on 4th of July is the indifference, uh, for me, the, the most extraordinary thing is the indifference of our Republican establishment to the central importance of the rule of law in making this country what it is. And the reason why people from the third world flock to get in because they want a country that is not corrupt, where officials don't believe themselves above the, above the law. And for Republicans in particular yeah. uh, to say that that shouldn't matter and uh, to, well, the to play the child card of it's somehow it's our laws that are responsible for separating families when it's the decision of somebody to come here illegally and take on the risk of, of being separated from his children. Uh, I think that that's extremely depressing about our oblivion towards what makes this country great. Well, I, I think that there's little, little doubt that the issue of the greatness of this country or its uh, destiny are a matter of, uh, well, not certainly a forethought or, or, or priority on the part of this administration, the GOP establishment uh, representing as they do so many special interests. Uh, rather than the middle class, uh, those who aspire to it, and, and the national interest. Heather McDonald, thanks for being with us. Good to see you. Thank you, Lou. We'd like to remind the Obama administration, if we might, that Marine Sergeant Andrew Tamarisi has been confined to a Mexican prison for 92 days now without a word from our president. I'm sure that is an oversight of some sort. It is also very likely about time that it's considered an outrage. Time for a look at our online poll results. We ask whether you believe it's even possible to secure our borders and ports with President Obama having another two years in office. 95% of you said no. That's the final vote on that issue. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. Who is a more inspiring leader to the citizens of his nation? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu our president, Barack Obama. Cast your vote at lewdobbs.com.